But look, you grew up in this state. You played for the Illini. For these players, this is a big deal. It's a huge deal. 44 players hail from the state of Illinois, most from the Chicago area, many of them Bears fans. This is a field they watch some of their heroes, their football heroes play when they were a kid. It's a big deal, and you want to have a good showing. Unfortunately, one of the guys who will not get a chance to play on this field today, A.J. Bush, starting quarterback for the first two games for the Fighting Illini, is out with a hamstring injury. M.J. Rivers, the true freshman out of Texas, getting the start. We saw him come in and play very well last week against Western Illinois. Yeah, 105 pass yards, two touchdowns, was poised. You know, he came in relief. You never know what a true freshman is going to look like. Bought time with his legs. Not only to buy time to pass, but also to run the ball. But I was most impressed with his mechanics in the pocket. Delivering the ball on time, had a couple touchdown passes to Edwin Carter, and didn't panic at all, able to lead the comeback for the Illini against Western Illinois. Now, with all due respect to Western Illinois, this is a step up in competition Absolutely. for MJ River. South Florida, for those who don't know, a very good group of five team. They were 10-2 and two a year ago, yeah. off to a solid start this year. Yeah, and 6-1 and one versus Power 5 teams over the last seven games. You think about... South Florida and what they can do offensively lots of plays lots of points but defensively remember this is a Charlie Strong defense a team that has his identity they're going to fly around and hit some people now that being said defense has looked a little shaky these first couple games particularly in the run game so we'll see whether or not the Illini can take advantage of that but yes a very good South Florida team for more on this one let's go down to the third member of our crew Allie Sturt Thank you very much, Dave. Well, Soldier Field is a place that holds a lot of memories for head coach Levy Smith of the Illini. He called this field home for nine years for the Chicago Bears, during which he led the Bears to one Super Bowl appearance, three playoff appearances, and one NFL Coach of the Year. So I asked Coach Smith about the emotions of returning to Soldier Field, and he said for him, well, the most important aspect was to see the excitement from his players because there are over 40 Illinois natives on his roster. And for them, this is a chance to play on their favorite NFL field. For them, this is a dream come true, guys. Oh, indeed it is. Should be a ton of fun to watch on an absolutely picture-perfect day in the city of Chicago. You could not ask for a nicer day. 77 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. Forecast looks great. And so we are ready for football. South Florida has won the toss. They have deferred, and so the Illini will get the ball first, Jay. Couldn't ask for better weather after last week. The deluge of rain across the Midwest, and now the sun splashed skies for week three in college football. Absolutely perfect. Carlos Sandy going deep to receive for the Fighting Illini. Sandy averaging 22 and a half yards per kick return this year. Again, just the fourth ever game for the Illini here at Soldier Field. They have never won one. Lost to Washington, Washington State, and Northwestern. This game, two of a three-game agreement to play here. The first one was that Northwestern loss. They've yet to announce what the third game will be. The kick is out of bounds. So good start for Illinois as the Illini will get some good field position. So getting ready to go from the 35 yard line and we'll get a chance to see MJ Rivers in action here and again very impressive last week and we were talking about it with Lovey Smith this week about hey would he be intimidated by the stage if he had to be the starting quarterback and Lovey said you know what Frisco Texas you play some big high school games right down there and we saw that last week came in was poised confident. I haven't seen a true freshman play like that ever. And I saw Juice Williams play, saw Cam Thomas last year. He exceeded my expectations. Mike Epstein is the running back alongside him. Now a bad snap goes over River's head, able to collect it, and now he is piled up. So a loss for the Illini in inauspicious first offensive snap as Khalid McGee, one of the guys there, along with Ronnie Hoggins, two of the stars of their defense. Yeah, Doug Kramer a little hot on the snap. Definitely catchable for Rivers. Probably should have tried to just throw it away, but possession was the key there. Minus 15, it looks like, negates the penalty on the kickoff. So big loss, yeah, 15 yards. Second down and 25 for the Illini. Again, Epstein alongside. And Rivers going to give it to Epstein. 
across the 25 to about the 27. Kirk Livingstone there for the tackle. Talking to offensive coordinator Rod Smith, he said, we're going to get Mike Epstein some more touches. He just has a knack to find the openings for the big play. Had a couple big runs against Western Illinois. Been very cautious with his reps through two games. Look for him to get more reps today. A lot have run it well through the first two weeks, but an obvious passing situation here on third and 18. Rivers under pressure and able to elude it. Fires downfield and overthrows his wide receiver. And so the Illini three and out on their first possession. Yeah, Kirk Livingstone really doing damage on Vidarian Low coming off the edge. Able to get pressure on Rivers. Rivers able to use his athleticism to get out of a bind. Trying to make the completion. Good, good series there for the Bulls defense. Blake Hayes been a great weapon for the Illini. The run by Tyree McCants, who takes it into Illinois territory. So very good field position for South Florida. As we take a look at our auto owners impact players. Tyree McCants, the guy you just saw return the punt. He's 5'11", 240 slot receiver. But he is a load. Terrence Horn, two touchdowns on kickoffs in the first quarter yesterday, uh, last week rather, against Georgia Tech. And Jamal Woods has been a pleasant surprise at defensive tackle. And Jake Hansen, monster game in week one. Played average week two, still second in the FBS in tackles for loss. 18 yard return there. This is Jordan Cronkright, the transfer from Florida. And Cronkright takes it inside the 45 before Stanley Green. Drags him down. That is Blake Barnett, the starting quarterback, a familiar name in college football, a guy who started the season opener two years ago for Alabama, but well traveled since then. And Barnett on second down, scrambles and fires complete. That is McCants, and he is knocked out at about the 27. Blake Barnett has the maturity to not panic in the pocket. Keeps his feet steady, able to find McCants, who is a load at the slot position. Such a mismatch is McCants. 17-yard gain there, so on first down, they give it to Cronkright. And he picks up three before Jake Hansen, who's been a tackling machine, particularly in that opener for the fighting line, I drags him down. It's a great tackler at the point of attack. Cronkright got three. You're going to see a lot of tempo from the Bulls. Sometimes they'll just get to the line and wait just to make the defense show their hand a bit. Barnett fires in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Randall St. Felix. A lot of times they'll use McCants as a decoy, as they did there. McCants and St. Felix on the same side. McCants looked like he was going to get the screen. Barnett looked McCants' way and then gets his eyes late on St. Felix. St. Felix, a guy they're really high on. Lots of speed on the outside for Randall St. Felix. Third down, an area where Illinois has excelled so far this year. About 72 percent in terms of stopping their opponents. Mitchell Wilcox. Barnett throws incomplete. And so it'll be fourth down. Now Barnett had Mitchell Wilcox with Jake Hansen on. Mitchell Wilcox, the tight end, very talented ball skills. Didn't find him. Instead, look for his back in the backfield. And just was actually knocked down there by Jamal Woods. Looked like Jamal Woods, 91, got his hand up. The kicking game is not great for South Florida. This was a big battle in camp. Jake Vivanella won it, but they are going to go for it on fourth down. Three for four so far this year, the Bulls are. Barnett fires. It is complete and a first down to his big tight end. You were talking about Mitchell Wilcox. Well, he was open the last play. I think the offensive core, Sterling Gilbert, said, let's go on, go on back and check it out. There is a flag on the play. Looks like it's going to be a USF. First of the foul. Trippy. Offense, number it 55. is indeed on the Bulls. Fourth It's going to go against Eric Mays. A personal foul there. That would fall under the bad decisions department. Dave, that's a huge penalty. A fourth down conversion. You're inside the 10. Now you're going to back it up close to the 40. You don't see tripping much. It has, has to be egregious. L look at 55 in the middle of your screen. Well, what a play there by, I think that was Bobby Roundtree coming off the edge, it looked like. Just demolished Mays. The Mays put a leg out and tripped Bobby Roundtree. So Trent Schneider on to punts.
the 28-year-old former construction worker in Australia turned USF putter. And his putt here is going to roll into the end zone. And so the Illinois defense dodges a bullet. The Alana will get it at the 20-yard line. No score early on here from Soldier Field. Football on BTN is brought to you by Discover Card, the official credit card of the Big Ten Conference. Back at historic Soldier Field, opened in 1924. Scoreless tie, Illinois and South Florida as we take a look at our auto owners insurance impact players, Jay. Sam Mays really filled the gap in the receiving core due to injuries. Reggie Corbin dynamic in the open field. Khalid McGee moved down from safety. And Kirk Livingstone off the edge for the Bulls. And this is Reggie Corbin, as if on cue, picking up about five yards before Kirk Livingstone drags him down. You're going to see Corbin. You're going to see Epstein. You're going to see a little bit of Rayvon Bonner. They like to rotate that stable of running backs. And they're going to have a chance to run the football on this Bulls defense. A team that gave up more than 400 rushing yards last week against Georgia Tech. So pretty good running attack. But you see they're vulnerable. And Corbin showing off his speed deep into South Florida territory. Reggie Corbin can hit the hole faster than any other uh, Illinois running back. Look up the block in the front. Nick Allegretti, big time block on Colin McGee, the linebacker. That let Corbin get to the second level untouched. Anytime you get to the second level as a lineman, you can break that running back free. Got 32 yards on that one. Mike Epstein in there now. And Epstein, the 20, the 15, dives for the end zone. Touchdown, Illinois. Bingo the play means he just did the same play they did with Corbin but with Epstein and Allegretti makes the same block on Khalid McGee got up to the second level that was the block that springs him Allegretti up to the middle linebacker McGee and springs Epstein Epstein for a 43 yard touchdown so just like that three plays 80 yards Mike Epstein doing two touchdowns against the Bulls last season gets one here pending the replay review From here, live, it looked like he got in. Usually, they give it the benefit of the doubt when you're reaching for the pile on. The big question is, was his knee down before the ball crossed the plane or hit the pile on? See Charlie Strong a little frustrated with his defense to this point. And again, this is an area where they have absolutely been vulnerable. As we look at Epstein again, uh, hard to tell there, Jay. I don't think he was out of bounds. And I think the ball's over the plane there. It's hard to see where his knee's actually down. Remember, called touchdown on the field. It would have to be obvious again to overturn it. I think this goal at least is going to stand, if not be confirmed. Mike Epstein's been a big play back for the Alana this year, coming back from the injury. Hard to tell if he's out of bounds from that point of view, but it feels to me like that's going to stand, Jay. I think that'll stand as well. I, the question is, was was his knee down before the ball crossed the plane? I, I don't think it, but credit to Rod Smith. You know, the, the play worked with Corbin the first time, and then they ran it again with Epstein with tempo before they could make an adjustment. That's a good, that's about the best look you're going to get after the ball's over the, over the uh, end line there goal line. If it stands, it's the longest run of the year for the fighting Illini. After review, the TD stands. At the call from Tracy Jones, so 6-0. The Illini out in front and Chase McLaughlin on to try to tack on one more. McLaughlin has never missed in his Illinois career. Perfect 51 of 51 on his PATs.
lot of drama, a lot of buildup to this extra point here. There has been some intense moments of review. <laughs> and McLaughlin able to nail it. And just like that, the Illini on top 7 nothing. Mike Epstein, the early touchdown. The Illini out on top. Don't you feel that we're the flagship university of the state? Chicago is a big recruiting base for us. Just a lot of things to get you motivated for that game. Uh, so for me, personal things on me, coaching there for a lot of years, that's kind of way down on the list. These other things kind of trump it. Now, Lovey Smith's team appears motivated so far. On top seven, nothing early. Smith, of course, nine seasons as the head coach of the Bears was 48 and 28. In this building, lost his last two and then brought Tampa Bay here as their head coach and lost as well. So he's trying to end a personal three game skid as McLaughlin kicks it through the end zone. If you're looking for Michigan SMU or Minnesota against Miami of Ohio, go to btn.com slash game finder right now to see where you can find the game in your area. Again, three games in each and every window today on BTN, a record nine games in all on the network. That's why I had to pull Dave Revson off the bench, right? <laughs> I mean, get pull him out of the they studio. Went deep into the bench. Deep into the bench. Yes. Showing how deep BTN's bench really is. <laughs> going deep with Dave Revson. Second well, year in a row, partner, we get a game. Love absolutely. it. Absolutely. Been a ton of fun. Certainly was last year. And good start here. As they hand it off and get a first down there, Tyree McCants. Picking up some yardage on a little jet sweep. How about Trevon Sands, though, with the block in space? Just chopped down the linebacker, Delshawn Phillips. Let McCants get the edge. They want to get the ball to McCants as much as they can. Gain of 11 there for McCants. And now it's Barnett. He can run it. Barnett lost the football. And Illinois got it. So the Illini create the turnover. Kendall Smith. It's going to be whether Barnett was down. Moving on the field, the fumble, there's some discussion defense. So this is going to be a first down, Illinois. As you take another look at it, here's Barnett. And the question was his hip down before Tony Adams dislodged the ball. Remember the call on the field is a fumble. I don't think his knee was down, but was his bottom down before the ball came out? Turnover there for South Florida, assuming the ruling number that it stands. And the Illini have done a great job of creating turnovers so far this year. That would be the sixth. They've committed just one. Charlie Strong's team, meanwhile, just one turnover on the year coming in. Wins over Elon and Georgia Tech. Let's look at it again. Well, Tony Adams coming off the injury. Uh, you can't see the ball in that view right there. So you don't know when it comes out. It, it looks like it's close, if anything, but I think it, it looked like he might be down from that angle. Yeah, I think so, too. Again, you're right. The ball was kind of obscured. Maybe this angle here. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. So and that would work to Illinois' favor, right, right if they can't if, tell. If it's obscured, then you can't really make a judgment call. This might be the best look at it right here. That left forearm comes through, and again, the ball gets obscured when it comes out, but it really pops out. Foley, is it dislodged before he hits the bottom? That's the hard question here. Now there he looks to be down, to me. But again, the ball's kind of covered up by Adams, who's coming up back from the injury. First playing time for him. And causing fumbles is something that Illinois has done very well. The Illinois offense has come out on the field. And I bet your pardon, Illinois defense has come back out on the field. So that would seem to indicate that we have, in fact, had an overrule. I, but the but the white but the white hat is still under the hood. So it, it's there's an assumption I think from looking at the replays on the jumbotron that it will be overturned. I feel like he's down, Jay. But again, it's not our call. I, I feel like he's down the, the only way that Illinois keep, keeps this fumble is if they say they were not able to get a conclusive look at when the ball came out because the call was a fumble on the field. The cause of fumble is something that Illinois has done very well the first two years under Lovey Smith.
happens in half a minute. The runner was moved down in possession. It'll be second down and three. South Florida. Today so heard it yeah. was overturned. A gain of seven for Charlie Strong's team. And Please reset the clock they to 10 possession minutes and 30 here. It'll be second and three. Seconds, After all that, second down from the 43-yard line of South Florida. Line eye on top, 7-0. They hand it off. Big hole. This is Cronkite in the Illinois territory. Down to about the 45. Cronkite with the read. He followed Eric Mays on the pull, the tackle. Then he cut back against the grain. Linebackers read the lineman, and he cut back when the line linebackers flowed too fast. Game of 12 for Cronkite. He'll go at it again. Transfer from Florida. Moves his way forward before he's brought down by Michael Marquez. Walk on. Same time in that Illinois secondary. They are banged up and they're also without Cameron Watkins. They're starting corners for the first half due to targeting. So they have experience in the secondary as Barnett throws incomplete, but a flag on the play. Looks like it might be pass interference on Illinois. St. Felix trying to get out of his break. Was there a hold there? We'll see what the referee has to say. Holding defense, number 10, 10 yard penalty. Automatic first. It's going to go against the Illini. Defensive holding on James Knight, the sophomore out of East St. Louis. Knight starting in place of the injured Sidney Brown, who suffered a concussion last week again a very young Illinois secondary and we'll see whether or not South Florida is able to take advantage Elijah Mack now the running back alongside Barnett and Mack's got it short game there for a guy who's really kind of a downhill runner Jake Hansen bringing him down It's a really good South Florida offense. 32 straight games, scoring at least 20 points. That's the longest streak in the nation. Looking for their first points here tonight as Barnett takes it down to the 25. He's again Hanson in on the tackle. How about Jake Hanson beating Marcus Norman in a one-on-one -on -one situation, defeating the man who was blocking him, able to come off the block and tackle Barnett in space. Hanson impressive thus far. We got a look for Mitchell Wilcox, who's second from the bottom of your screen, and second from the top, Tyree McCants, in third down situations. Third and five, Barnett fires off the hands of his receiver, battling the air, nearly caught by Wilcox. That's about as exciting as an incompletion gets. And on third down, a little popcorn action. Who wanted it? They love to look at their inside receivers, but can't usually sure hand the ball's thrown behind him. Felix gets a chance at then Wilcox. Nobody can quite pull it up. Come down with it. It's fourth down again. Last time, remember, big completion to Wilcox on fourth down. That got called back because of the tripping penalty. We just have to watch out for Wilcox in these situations. So sure handed. This crowd coming to its feet here at Soldier Field. Barnett. Rolling out, dumps it off for Wilcox. Can he get there? He does. So a first down, Delshawn Phillips making the tackle for the Illini, but not before South Florida moves the chains. And yeah, the scouting report on South Florida is when they need a play, it's Tyree McCants or Mitchell Wilcox. And that's what they've done on third and fourth down. They go to their sure-handed veterans to get a completion. Gain of seven. Bulls like to move quickly. This is a team that ran the second most plays on average of any team in the country last year. A short gain there to set up a second down. And they'll just hammer you with an inside run, inside run, screen, screen, and then it'll take a shot downfield. Delshawn Phillips blew that play up, came down on Norman, the tackle. Jordan Cronkright in there. It's Trayvon Sands on the last carry. Now they dump it off for St. Felix across the 10, and inside the 5 goes Randall St. Felix. First in goal for South Florida. Well-designed tunnel screen. 
by Sterling Gilbert. And then they're going to go fast here. Watch, he comes back to the football, then gets upfield immediately. On first down, handed off. And it's a touchdown. So just like that, South Florida able to strike back. Jordan Cronkite, the touchdown run, and the Bulls are on the board. Keep an eye on here. It is Trent Schneider holding for South Florida. Kyle Trina, their the ruling of touchdown. normal holder, injured during the course of the week. Looks like they're going to take a look on if this was actually a touchdown or not. All scoring plays reviewed. And I think he's in. I think he's able to reach that ball out across the goal line before his knee falls to the ground. Good push up there by Mays and Wilcox. I think that's a touchdown. So pending the review, a 7-6 game. If it stands, an 11 play, 75-yard drive against Lovey Smith's defense. A lot of reviews early on here. Let's get this more time. I like it. The moving up touchdown is confirmed. It is a touchdown. So the Bulls on the board. And now Kobe Weiss has come in to kick. We were expecting to see Jake Vivanetto, who sat out last week due to an illness. But it is Weiss will attempt this extra point. Again, we told you, place kicking, a little dicey for South Florida, something they were very concerned about in camp. Vivanetto did win the job, a transfer from John Carroll, but it is Weiss attempting the extra point here. And the kick is good, so even at seven, as we approach the halfway point here, of the first quarter at Soldier Field, the Florida transfer, Jordan Cronkite, into the end zone. Back in Chicago, along the Chicago River, on an absolutely spectacular day. Illinois and South Florida tied at seven early on. And the Illini set to receive. Carlos Sandy is deep for Illinois. one went out of bounds as does this one so the kicking game has beguiled South Florida so far. We kicked out of bounds. Two straight out of bounds in the line in field position once again. Families affected by Hurricane Florence urgently need support. Help the American Red Cross provide meals and shelter to these families. Donate by going to redcross.org or text Florence to 90999 to give $10 to the American Red Cross Hurricane Relief Fund. So the Illini take over at the 35. They've had two drives. The first one was an abject failure, and the second one could have been more of a success. Well, I think I go back to the run game. Even though they haven't had MJ Rivers have a completion yet, that run game looked stout last drive. The 72 rushing yards for the Illini. They have yet to record a passing yard. And they back themselves oh, up. Five yards. Offense, number 79. Bad job penalty. First down. Darian Lowe, guy Rod Smith was really singing the praises of for the offensive coordinator on the phone with us earlier this week, telling us that maybe he's been their most consistent offensive lineman, but penalty there. Rivers, going to give it to Corbin. Corbin trying the right side, has some running room, and Corbin knocked out just shy of the 40. Let's go down on the field to Allen. Well, Jay, you were just talking about the Illini's run game, and I spoke with Mike Epstein earlier this week, and he said something that made him very confident in the running backs in general is that they practice on grass during the week, similar to the forgiving surface they hear at Soldier Field. They said that's helping them a lot, and they're very confident with it. Pick up of 10 yards there, and they throw it to Smolling. Ricky Smolling's got room in the South Florida territory. 
inside the 40-yard line. That's a sight for sore eyes for Illini fans to see Smalling healthy and making a big play was on the tunnel screen that South Florida scored, and they were on the tunnel screen for the Illini get a big game. Pickup of 20 for Smalling in this last week with a leg injury. Rivers dragged down there at the 40-yard line. Ronnie Hoggins, the leader of the defense, making the tackle for the Bulls. Love how Ronnie Hoggins plays. All five, eight of them, buck 75. And that's really the difference between M.J. Rivers and A.J. Bush. A.J. Bush is more mobile. M.J. Rivers might be a little bit bigger, might throw a better ball. Bush has the mobility advantage. going to run it, and Rivers inside the 35. Talk about poise there. Obviously changed the play. They saw the man-to-man -man coverage. They said, let's try to take a shot downfield. Nothing was open. He didn't panic. Felt like he was getting close to line of scrimmage. Gave a little bit of pump, then ran it for seven yards, and had good ball security. Nico Sautel, the linebacker, tried to rip it out of the young freshman's arms. Third and four for the Illini. Corbin and Corbin trying to stay on his feet able to lurch forward to about the 33 but still well short of the first down McLaughlin has the leg to hit a 50 yard field goal. so what would be four down ter territory for South Florida probably turns into a field goal attempt here well, this would be from 52 yards. McLaughlin's career high is 54. Set way back last week. I knew that one was coming when he said way back. Yeah. You're on to me. And a timeout here. All by South Florida. So my question is, do, do, do kickers like it when oh, there's a flag action? I don't know if it was a timeout before the flag. to the snaps, illegal substitution, defense, bad block for the team, resulting wow. in the first thing. Talk about shooting yourself in the foot. South Florida, illegal substitution gives Illinois a first down. And, and Charlie Strong wants to, wants to get an explanation. This is usually an offensive penalty. And so he's getting an explanation. That is a critical penalty. That's two critical penalties. We saw the tripping down by the goal line, and that's going to give a first down to the Illini. Second really costly penalty for South Florida. Now we see if the Illini can take advantage. First and 10 from the 29. Mike Epstein, who scored the touchdown earlier back in the game, alongside Rivers. Rivers throwing it downfield complete and there's going to be a flag when they hit the quarterback here it could be a personal foul personal foul Plus the pass here defense possible low contact on the pass 15 yard penalty automatic first down well, the Bulls continuing to self-destruct and the frustration written all over Charlie Strong's face yeah, you're going to see Clint McGee come late and I, I, I'm not sure I see the penalty on that. I think he tries to hit him in the waist right as he's throwing the ball. It is a little low, but you can't hit the quarterback high. That's a tough call for Kalin McGee. Very tough call. I'm a defensive guy. I think Charlie Strong feels the same way. Yeah, it's kind of what are you supposed to do at a certain point. As it is, first down for the Illini. Epstein lurches forward inside the 10. This is what Mike Epstein does. He disappears into a pile and then pops out for five, six, seven yards. We saw him with the 43-yard gain earlier. Has a knack like water to always find the hole. Epstein, special player, one of the few skill guys that can break it for the Atlanta. He went over 100 yards a week ago, already over 50 in this game. Of course, he by a long touchdown run. Second and five inside the 10. They'll run some option, and Rivers has got a whole lot of running room. Credit to MJ Rivers. Changed the play once. He saw South Florida adjust. Changed the play again. 
ran the option, wasn't that successful, but to lose yards, sets up a third. And third and fourth for Ilana. You want to come out of this with points, obviously, Jay. Right. And so you wonder with the freshman quarterback. I think you got to roll him to the right, give him, give him an option to, to run the ball. You got three receivers to the right, and you're on the left hash. That's your best option to complete the first down. Eighth play of the drop. Rivers fires it. And incomplete. Intended for Smalling. You see some jawing there as Smalling and Nick Roberts are going at it. And so the Illini will be forced to settle for a field goal. Let's take a look at this. See Rivers fired in there. Oh, great, great hands right there by Wilkins. Mozzie Wilkins able to get his hand and actually knock the ball out of Smalling's hand. Would have been a tough catch. So Chase McLaughlin. Certainly far easier than the attempt would have been a few moments ago. This one from 26 to try to put the Illini back on top. And he does just that. So Illinois has scored on his last two possessions. Time out. The Illini leading South Florida. Charlie Strong's team down three. A dangerous proposition. Last week, Terrence Horn of the Bulls, a true freshman, ran two kicks back for a touchdown in the first quarter against Georgia Tech. One of 98, one of 97. A dangerous weapon, to say the least, Jay. 10 2 9 100-meter dash sprint champion in the state of Florida. There's a little bit of speed <laughs> in the state of Florida. Has Olympic aspirations. You can see the numbers right there. 47 yards of return. Now, the good thing is Chase McLaughlin's got a great leg, and we've seen him kick it now over Horn's head twice. So that's a great way to deal with an outstanding kick return. Don't give him a chance. Terrence Horn absolutely changed that game last week against Georgia Tech. And Chase McLaughlin, 13 touchbacks on 15 kickoffs. Strength in his leg. You said he hit a 54-yarder last week. Been accurate. The special teams, along with Blake Hayes, the punter, been a real bright spot. Bob Ligaszewski did a great job, the special teams coordinator for Illinois. Yeah, Lovey Smith telling us this week, hey, special teams have become a weapon for us. And, of course, that was always part of his formula when he was with the Bears is Barnett takes the handoff to Cronkite and Blake Barnett picks up a couple before sliding down. Isaiah Gay, the first one there for the Illini. That's the effort Illinois fans want to see from Isaiah Gay. So fast off the edge. He's gained 20 pounds in the offseason. Came with some juice off the edge, able to hunt Barnett down. Added some really good weight, according to Lovey Smith. Played a little undersized for that position last year. He's Barnett's pass is not down, and again, it's Isaiah Gay. Well, Isaiah Gay, the recruiting story goes there, watching Bobby Roundtree on tape. They saw Isaiah Gay on tape. They said, we need to take this guy. He's got 200 pounds in high school, had an incredible get-off. They said, this is the kind of pass rush we want to end up starting as a true freshman, put on some much deeper weight, as Lovey Smith said. Very high on their two defensive ends, Bobby Roundtree and Isaiah Gay. So third and nine, South Florida 0 for 2 on third down so far. Barnett has it knocked in the air and incomplete. Nearly picked off. It was the guy you were talking about, Bobby Roundtree, in there for the Illini and this crowd appreciative of the Illinois D. There's Bobby Roundtree. He's not going to be able to get to the quarterback, but watch him put his hands up. Comes inside, then comes outside, gets that left paw, tries to get the interception, and Barnett has to play defense to make sure it's not intercepted. Those two defensive ends need to play like the players they are. They're doing it today thus far. Lana able to hold again. Forcing the kick here from Trent Schneider. And it is not a good kick. Does take a South Florida roll, and it'll roll dead at about the 44-yard line. The Bulls down three to what is a short-handed Illinois team. They still have three starters suspended. Those three you see in yellow, Dorsey, Hobbs, and Williams, have not played all year. And then the wide receivers banged up. Mike Dudek, Carter as well, we saw last week. So a host of Alana, including their starting quarterback, out for this game, Chad. They're playing shorthanded, but they're being competitive against a very, very good 
South Florida team. It's got to be encouraging, not only for the coaching staff, but for Illini fans. When those players get back, it could be a big boom to this Illini squad. So just a 31-yard punt. We'll see if the Illini can take advantage. Epstein in the South Florida territory. I tell you what, I love the vision of Mike in, uh, Mike Epstein. That play is supposed to hit front side. He cuts it back. Backside gets a nice game. Eight yards to set up a second and two. Epstein again, and then he has a first down. See South Florida adjust on that play. Those are the two plays that really gas South Florida on the touchdown drive. They move the defensive line over slightly. Epstein adjusts by cutting it back on the backside. First down, Illinois. First and ten. You mentioned Georgia Tech going over 400 yards rushing on South Florida a week ago. 419. That happens against Georgia Tech, but how about Elon? Nearly 200 in the opener. Got to be a concern for Brian John Marie, the defensive coordinator. And Epstein, the fake, and now they throw it. And it is complete to the tight end, Daniel Barker. Short gain for the freshman who just caught the first pass of his career. This is basically a triple option play with Barker being the pitch man. If Barker can catch it clean, he might gain three or four. But he has an option to hand off to Epstein to run or to throw the football. It's a gain of two, second and eight. South Florida's brought a lot of pressure early, trying to rake, make Rivers throw it in there on windows against tight coverage with people in his face. Epstein going in motion. Rivers fires to Smalling. And a short game there for Ricky Smalling. Ron Hoggins over to make the tackle. Coach has said he's got a heart of a line. Ronnie Hoggins Jr. Listed about 5'8". Plays a lot bigger, though, than Nickelback. Well, they love him, a guy they feel like can play just about anywhere for them in the back seven of that defense. And that says something when you consider the guys 5'8", 177. But John Marie saying he'd be a linebacker. Here's Rivers on third down. And Rivers fires incomplete, went through the hands of Ricky Smalling. And so now Illinois presumably will have to punt it away. Rivers looks comfortable right there, but just a little high and behind Smalling. If he leads Smalling, that could be a first down. Also had Barker open right away in the flat. But Rivers is reading his primary read. If it's not there, he's putting his eyes down and looking to run. It's three of six so far in this game. Tyree McCants back deep for the Bulls. Calls for the fair catch at about the nine-yard line. Well, coming up on BTN, our triple header wraps up with three games in prime time for you, hosting Missouri, Iowa clashing with Northern Iowa, and Northwestern taking on Akron. The action continues tonight, 7.30 Eastern, presented by John Deere, right here on BTN and on the Fox Sports app. Go to btn.com slash game finder to see where you can find the game in your area. I said that a few times on the pregame show today. Nine games on BTN, so... Part of the challenge is want to make sure everyone knows to check out Game Finder to find your game. On first down, Barnett going to give it off and a pretty good gain on first down for Cronkite. Good push up front by the center, Michael Wiggs. Pushing the defensive tackles around that play. Give it to Cronkite again across the 20. So he will have a South Florida first down. Jamal Woods brings him down to the Illini. And the interior of that defensive line has been banged up as well. Jamal the line. End of the first quarter. Ray Oladipo. So at the end of the first quarter, how about 10 points for the Illini in this first stance? Pretty good for a team that scored three total in the first quarter in its first two games. Mike Epstein with a lone touchdown for Illinois. Jordan Cronkite answering for the Bulls. Illini by a field goal. Second quarter coming up from Soldier Field. Back in Soldier Field, 10-7 Illinois over South Florida. Lovey Smith back in the building where he coached the Bears for nine years. And early on, things looking good for his Illini. Nate Barnett off 
play action. Fires the right side as a receiver, St. Felix, breaks the tackle in Randall St. Felix up close to midfield before he is knocked down. Well, if you're Jartavius Martin and you're in man coverage on St. Felix, do not fall down and do not miss the tackle. They did both. It leads to an explosive play. Someone Hardy Nickerson said they really wanted to negate explosive plays. 23 yards there, so first and 10, Barnett. And fires, it is intercepted. Intercepted. So the Illini come up with another turnover. We were talking about Jartavius Martin a moment ago. His second pick of his young career. Yeah, both off deflections, but it's Michael Marquez on that play. Had a big pick, almost returned for a touchdown against Western Illinois. He's able to come up and knock the ball loose. You'll see 42 coming. I thought Barnett was actually going to run the ball. He tries to force the ball into Wilcox, and you see the helmet right on the ball from 42 Marquez. And Jartavius Martins, Johnny on the spot, gets the turn. Marquez comes in, helmet on the ball, pops up to Martin. Big turnover for the Illini. How about Martin, the only true freshman in the nation to start and have an interception in week one. It's another one here in week three. Sets Illinois up with some good field position. And on first down, the Illini keeping it on the ground. Rayvon Bonner up across the 45. Rayvon Bonner's the power back. Epstein's the all-around. Corbin's the one with a little bit of wiggle in the open field. And Bonner is the guy that can really stick it up into the middle of the defense to get the hard yards. They give him a gain of six. Rivers. Hands off to Bonner again, and he's got a first down. Talk about the, br the brigade. Nick Allegretti, Ellis Pelcheski on the counter play. Pull around and just lead the way for Bonner. Great blocking up front by Allegretti and Pelcheski. Again, the Illini will run it. Short game there for Bonner. Khalid McGee over to make the tackle, coming off an 11 tackle performance against Elon a couple weeks ago, that career high. Now Epstein checking in after a few good runs from Bonner on second and six. Rivers fires it, completes. And a first down for the Illini, Sam Mays, down to the 30-yard line. They've got to have Rivers be able to complete that pass. They're bringing seven, eight guys in the box. Illinois running the ball all right, but to relieve that pressure, you got to complete that pass. Mays has been a pleasant surprise thus far. They got the 13. It's Epstein. About three or four. Nico Chantel, the linebacker, dragging him down. And Kendrick Green, a slow getting up for the Illini, the redshirt freshman from Peoria. Switched over from defensive tackle. One more highly recruited lineman on this roster has really excelled in the run game blocking has struggled in the past game good to see him walk off you know they can ill afford to lose anybody on that offensive line looks like he'll be back soon jake cerny is going to come in for illinois number 73 he typically is the guy who would replace green So second and seven. And they hand it off to Epstein. Not a whole lot there as he dragged down around the 29. Really crowding with the tackle. Sorry, Jay. Really crowding, crowding the box. Nico Sautel, the linebacker. Experienced player. Moved over to the middle linebacker to fill in for Augie Sanchez. Great player for the Bulls for so many years. But they are really daring MJ Rivers to throw, and he's going to have to throw here. On third and seven from the 28. You've got to think Mays at the top of your screen, under the boundary. Rivers fires it, just overthrowing Sam Mays, and so brings up a fourth down. Sam Mays is his comfort zone on third down, especially with Smalling being banged up last week. 
He loves to throw to his right. So MJ Rivers is going to look up the safety to the left, then throw right down the hash to Mays and just needs a more accurate throw. It's catchable. Make an easier throw for your receiver to catch, and that's a first down. It's now a 46-yard attempt for Chase McLaughlin. Again, we told you he has a great leg. Four of five on the year. One earlier. And this one splits the uprights. So the Alana. A couple of field goals from McLaughlin. 13 to 7 lead. MJ Rivers and the Illini on top 13 to 7. Rivers today becoming just the fifth true freshman ever to start a quarterback for the Illini. Kurt Kittner, Juice Williams, Cam Thomas, and Aaron Bailey technically started a game in kind of an odd formation. But in terms of being the guy for every snap, he's just the fourth ever to do so. And the Illini on top 13 7. Behind MJ Rivers, and now once again, we keep an eye on Terrence Horn, the outstanding kick returner, has not gotten a chance yet. And again, McLaughlin, what a weapon that is. He's vastly improved from even last year. His ability to get touchbacks and negate any returns. Time to test your knowledge now with today's half Trivia question. Name the three men who are in both the Chicago Bears and the Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame. Mm, pretty good. And a couple obvious ones. If you know your Alana and Bears history, one that may throw people off a little bit. Give the answer a little bit later. The Alana on top of South Florida, 13 to 7. And Elijah Mack, short gain on first down for the Bulls. Well, Woods the tackle there for Illinois. So on second and six, it is Matt again. And he is a punishing runner. So you've got Jamal Kenyon Jackson, Lorel Ladipo in the middle. Just rotating those defensive tackles. Three straight runs yield the first down as Mack moves the chains. Sterling Gilbert must have got upset with some turnovers and incomplete passes. Decided to go back to the ground game with Mack, who's, a, like you said, a punishing runner. That's not a good sight for Illini fans. Looks like Isaiah Gay. Injury time up. On the ground. See the trainers coming out to take a look at Gay, the sophomore. Nashville, North Carolina. Time out. We take a break. Illinois by six. Lovey Smith's team on top of South Florida, 13 to seven. Isaiah Gay leaving the field with an injury for the Illini. Try to get an update as soon as we can for you on his stats. But that defensive line has been key. This is such a fast South Florida team. The pass rush has kind of negated that speed, Jay. Absolutely, especially the mismatch between the big receivers and the young defensive backs of Illinois. On first and ten, trying to get the speed involved here on the jet sweep from Horn. And not much there for Horn. Good job defensively. Stanley Green leading the way for the Illini. Owen Carney there as well. Yeah, Owen Carney filled in for Isaiah Gay. Doesn't make the play, but makes Horn bow enough outside where the brigade can come and gang tackle Horn, who's got elite speed. Yeah, again, we told you this guy brought two kicks back for touchdowns last week. Just the 25th player ever to do that in one game after the and that movement on the left side of the line for the Bulls. Yeah, it looked like Garrett Mays, the left tackle, jumped early. Ball start. Hopping. Number 55. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's encouraging news for the Alana. Isaiah Gay out of the tent. And back on the bench. You see some of his teammates checking in with him there. So after the penalty, second down and 11 for the Bulls. Fourth penalty on South Florida. A couple of them have been very costly. Arnett off play action. Fires it complete. And a short gain. That's Darnell Solomon. And Bobby Roundtree with elite effort. 
getting back to tackle Solomon. First it was the pursuit by Hanson. Made Solomon cut it back. Bobby Roundtree saying, even though it was a complete pass, puts his foot in the ground and chases him. Now that's the effort plays you need from one of your best players. Because when he does it, everybody does it. Third down, you've always got to look for the mismatch on the inside receivers. Mitchell Wilcox tight right there in the wing position. Barnett. Not going to get there. So he's going to look for Wilcox to his left. He's not open. Realize he's running out of time. And the pocket collapses on him. Looks like Delshawn Phillips is able to force it. See Jamal Woods with pressure. And it's Delshawn Phillips able to finish off Barnett. Quarterback draw hurt them in week one against Woody Barrett of Kent State. Made that adjustment. So now they force the fourth punt of the game from Trent Shiner. It's a pretty good roll. And... It is down to about the 13-yard line. So the Illinois defense continues to impress. Time out, 13-7, a line out. Back at Soldier Field as we answer our AFLAC trivia question, the three men who are in both the Bears and Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame. A couple pretty obvious ones you would think in Red Grange and Dick Butkus. How about George Hallis? Pictured there as a baseball player for the Fighting Illini, but also played football and basketball, was a member of the New York Yankees, briefly, wow. George Hallis. Look at you going in the archive. All three of those guys, pro football Hall of Famers as well. A little setback here for the Illini. This is Rayvon Bonner, and Bonner picks up a few. Worst field position so far today for the Illini, and going conservative there on first down. Kirk Livingstone with the tackle. So second and eight. Again, two backs alongside Rivers. Rolling to his left and just going to throw it away. A smart play by Rivers. Nothing open. Don't force it. You don't want to turn over. You played pretty mistake free football from Illinois at this point. No real critical errors. Does set up the third down and long. But you have another chance. Hey, talk about no turnovers for Illinois last week against Western Illinois, which ended a streak of 16 games with at least one. Longest in the nation. Enforcing turnovers here today. Not done well on third down. 0 for 5 so far. See if they can get their first one here. Pressure coming. On third and eight. Rivers dumps off the screen to Epstein. And Epstein has the first down and more. Epstein across the 40. Epstein near midfield. A big game for the Illini. And some breathing room. How about Rod Smith? Knows they're going to bring a pressure. Calls the screen right in the face of the blitz. Sautel and Colin McGee going to blitz right up the middle. They substitute Epstein for Bonner. They complete the pass. Kramer leads the brigade. Big game for the Illini. 32 yards on that play. First down, just shy of midfield. And a big hole as Illinois now into South Florida territory. Epstein on the carry there. This South Florida team lost. If you look at this screenplay with the pressure coming. Epstein has the knack for the big play and a deceptive amount of speed to him as well. Epstein again. Not much going on. This time, Red McGee, Josh Black, there on the tackle for South Florida. This is a defensive line from South Florida. Lost three NFL defensive linemen, along with one of their all-time leading tacklers and Augie Sanchez as their middle linebacker. Right now, this Illinois offensive line against a quality opponent, the best I've seen them play in the Levy Smith era, running the football. Illinois had great continuity on the offensive line this year. Kendrick Green back in there, which is a really encouraging sign. Rivers dumps it off complete. That's Corbin. Corbin inside the 40, and Corbin right around the 30-yard line. And one on moves the chains again. Well, they see a mismatch. The backs on the linebackers. Khalid McGee has Corbin man-to-man, -man, but loses him out of the backfield. And Corbin's running free in the flat. Easy completion. Those are the completions they're letting Rivers complete on third down. We saw it with the screen pass. Now we see it with the flat pass. Give him some confidence that he can complete those third downs. Second straight conversion for the Illini after they had failed on their first five. 
the 30 yard line trying to build on this six point lead. And Rivers, a keeper, keep it himself. Maybe a yard or two is certainly the right choice on the read option there because they were all over it. Something out of nothing. Dead to rights with two defenders in his face. Able to wiggle through for a two-yard game. Ronnie Hawkins Jr. Love how he plays. football and it looks like South Florida's got it. Mozzie Wilkins comes out of there with it. Dial up the corner blitz. Mozzie Wilkins comes in. Problem on the running back quarterback exchange. Nobody knew who was taking the ball. Was it Corbin? Was it Rivers? And you can see they just never quite get it in the belly and Wilkins who was on the corner blitz able to make the play in the recovery easily. Without that corner blitz, I think Rivers falls right back down on the play. First critical error for the Illini. Let's see how the defense responds to sudden change. There's a turnover there for Lovey Smith's team, so one apiece. Now from the 30, here comes Jordan Cronkite. Cronkite in the open field, and he is down to the 45-yard line of Illinois. to pound it and finally they're breaking a few looking at feet crowd crowd again probably 24 yards there longest play of the game for south florida now barnett on the keeper and blake barnett temporarily lost the ball looks like he got it back probably was down anyway second time we've seen barnett have some security issues ball ball security issues he looks like to be limping a little bit after that hit and this is where the tempo really gets you. Love to get big plays back to back into the bowls against this defense. First down. They hand it off and some positive yardage there. Ron Cried again on the carry. Usually South Florida takes a shot after they've run it a couple of times. They'll take a shot on the man coverage. We haven't seen that yet. Pick up the five. They give it to Cronkite again. And Cronkite unable to shed the tackle there from Jontavious Martin with the interception earlier. The freshman continues to play well here for the Illini. Boy, tough play by Martin. Looked like he was going to get stiffed on by Cronkite. Just that able to make the tackle. Still first down. Yeah, they do move the chains, but they have earned the bigger game there. And flag on this play. After the short game by Cronkite. Personal foul. You need to block below the waist. Offense, oh, number 89. The goals continue with the critical errors. That one on the tight end, Mitchell Wilcox. Very critical error. This is... Let's take a look right here. You see how he comes from the outside? He's not square when he actually hits the linebacker in the legs. You have to be square if you're going to cannot come from the side. That's an illegal block. If he was square on the defender, that is a legal block. Wilcox hit up for the critical penalty. The fifth penalty of the game for the Bulls. You see 55 yards. Just two for the Illini who had 153 yards in penalties a week ago. Isaiah Gay back in there for the Illini. So Illinois has gone to a little bit more zone as we saw Jake Hansen on that tackle of small. And are going to run the football when they see zone. On second down. Conservative play calling after the penalty, and now South Florida's got some work to do. Yeah, look out for number eight, number three on your screen right there, the third receiver from the bottom in motion. They hand it off to him, and the Alana able to sniff that one out. Well played by Tony Adams. Tony Adams using the hands, defeated his one on one. You'll see Adams coming to your screen. McCants has Small as the lead blocker, but watch. 
the defensive play by Adams. He splits the blocker, is able to tackle McCants and not get a penalty by doing something silly out of bounds. So South Florida going to attempt what would be a 44-yard field goal from Weiss. Have to be aware of a fake or maybe even a punt. They've had struggled as a field goal kicking team. His kick is no good. So the Illini hold. And Charlie Strong's team stuck Stand in up. the mud offensively. Down six. Charlie Strong in South Florida trailing Illinois 13 to 7. Strong a Coaching a team that won 10 games a year ago, he inherited an 11-win team from Willie Taggart. They have been really good here of late. At 23 wins in their last 27 games. Two bowl wins over Power 5 teams. Jay, you talk about at the top, won six of their last seven against the Power 5. But the Alana have thoroughly outplayed them here in the first half. On first down, Epstein. Short game there before Kirk Livingstone and Khalid McGee come in to make the tackle. This is a team that really took it to Illinois last year in week three. Illinois didn't look like they belonged on the field. 680 yards of offense for the Bulls last year. Of course, they had Quentin Flowers, some also done some big time weapons offensively in that special defense. But you can see the difference a year makes in Illinois outrushing a Bulls offense that. In the past, they've run the ball very effectively. Yeah, it was 47-23 last week in Tampa. Here on second and 10, Epstein is shy of the 30. Lana going conservative here. And South Florida going to take a timeout. Up, to first charge time up. Try to get the get 30 seconds ball out. back here. Illinois on top of South Florida, 13 to 7. A third down here for the Illini. Third and eight. Last two third downs, we've seen the running backs with easy throws. Looks like pressure again. And they drop off. Rivers buying some time. He throws it out to Epstein in the flat. Epstein unable to get to the marker, and so Illinois will have to kick it away. Khalid McGee up. with the tackle in South charge. Florida time taking timeout. 30 second timeout. 13-7, Illini trying to hold off South Florida before the half. Blake Hayes booting it away for the Illini as drives one deep there, and McCann's flag on the play as McCann's runs out of bounds at the 20, but went out penalty on South Florida. It looked like there was a block in the back on Kirby Joseph. Doing the returns, the legal block in the back. Receiving team, number seven, after distance to the bowl. First down. Talk about how good the special teams have been. Another really nice punt there, and look at the penalty here. It looked like Hampton, defensive back, the block in the back. You know, if there's any kind of gray area on a punt, on a block in the back, usually it's called special team penalty. So devastating because they're spot fouls. We're gonna take it half the distance from there. They're gonna have a drive to drive 92 yards. And the Buck 17 with a timeout. You gotta wonder how Lovey Smith uses his full trio of timeouts in this series. I'm just curious whether South Florida is gonna try to do something offensively here. Backed up. Obviously, the intent was, hey, let's get the ball back and try to make some noise, but I don't think Charlie Strong anticipated taking over his eight-yard line. And Barnett going to give it to Jordan Cronkright. He will take it up to about the 15. I think if you get a stop here on third down, you might try to call time. Second and three. The South Florida doesn't appear to be in any great hurry. Here's Cronkright. He has the first down. And does that change things at all? For Illinois, I don't think you're going to look to use your talents. Obviously, you have it used today. 
Southwood will get the second half kick, so has to put a couple possessions back to back here. And now they are going to try to throw it. That is complete to Wilcox out across the 30. Big adjustment from Illinois, not just on this drive. They're actually playing a zone coverage. They're a huge man-to-man -man team. And as they played zone, they were leaving only five men in the box, which opened up the run plays for South Florida late in this first half. Barnett fires downfield and is complete into Illinois territory. Mechanics down to the 33. And McCants had some cramping issues a week ago whether this is a cramp or whether it's something else. Well, if you're South Florida, you hope it's a cramp as opposed to something else. This guy's special. And all of a sudden, nothing's happening, and they actually go to the air a little bit, and they start to make this, some completions and get in the field goal range. I see him getting up and hobbling off again. That an exact replica of what we saw from him a week ago. Right. I mean, he's 240 pounds. He is a big fella it's for a quite, wide receiver. Not quite for the heat, but it's warm. Guy on a school record, 227 receiving yards last year against UCF. Heartbreaking defeats now. First down, 34 yards on that last play. Barnett. Intercepted. Delshawn Phillips. And Phillips still on his feet. Phillips across the 40. Phillips. Knocks out of bounds. The Illini defense coming up big again. Jake Hansen tipped it. Delshawn Phillips picked it off. Dave, I think we have our first BTN standout of the game. Zone coverage looking for Wilcox across the middle. The BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Hansen tips it. Watch Delshawn Phillips. Watch the physicality. He says, get off me. Get off the club. There we go. Look at him. So physical. Looks like a running back. And then Delshawn Phillips with a great return. Your goal is not just to get turnovers, but to score. That's quite the effort by Delshawn Phillips. Look at this right here. Dave, what do you think about this stiff arm right there? Mm. I think that kind of encapsulates this first half performance for the Illini. They have played harder. They have played tougher. They have looked inspired here in the first half, and they will head to the locker room with a lead. So do you take a shot at the end zone? It certainly looks like that. Or you maybe try to get to the sideline to let Chase McLaughlin hit a big field goal. Looks like they're going to try something here. Rivers fires it, completes about the 35-yard line. There's still a couple of ticks left. And can Illinois get some points out of this? McLaughlin is coming out onto the field. This is certainly within his range. What was interesting is South Florida was in a prevent. Prevent defense, you got everybody back by the end zone. Good call by Rod Smith. Says, hey, run something to the sticks. If we catch it, the ball, the time has to stop to move the chains. We'll call timeout. We'll set up McLaughlin, who's got a monster leg to make it happen. There you see the numbers on Chase. They said a couple. So far today, we mentioned a week ago, had his career long. This will be just a tad shy of that. A negligible win here today at Soldier Field, so that will not be a factor. College football, such a game of momentum. McCants is about ready to score. They tackle him. Maybe they're going to score. There's the interception. They run it back. Then they have a first down throw. All of a sudden, Illinois looks to have some momentum if they can complete the field goal going into half. This from 53 for the senior from Cypress, Texas. It hit the fourth longest field goal in program history a week ago from 54. This a yard shy of that at 53. first half for the Illini. Now there is a flag on the play. So hold everything. It is 
is roughing the kicker against South Florida. Illinois takes the points, and Charlie Strong's team takes a walk to the locker room. Roughing the kicker defense. You see what the roughing is right here. You'll see coming off the edge here. Second half kick runs into the field goal. He's laying right there. McLaughlin, maybe a little bit of acting by McLaughlin there, but he sold it. You see right there, falls in on the defender. It's hard to see who that was coming off the edge. They got called for the penalty. So Lovey Smith's team goes to the locker room on top of South Florida, 16 to 7. Let's go down to Allie, who was on the field with Lovey Smith. Thanks, guys. Well, Coach, you spoke about a faster start to get this game going off. What did you see from your team to allow them to have so much momentum in that first half? We saw a motivated team, you know. It's always about takeaway and a turnover battle. We've been winning that. We've been a little bit offensively. If you keep running the ball like that, you have a chance to win. What have you thought of MJ Rivers' performance taking the reins for your team once again? I thought he, he started slowly like a freshman can, but I thought he finished up strong. He's playing pretty good football right now. Thank you very much, Coach. Well, the Illini, pretty good football all around for Illinois. With a true freshman backup starting quarterback, Lovey Smith and company, up nine at the half. Charlie Strong's team down 16 to 7 at the half as we check back in with Allie. Thanks, David. I was able to talk with Charlie Strong as he was coming back on the field here, and I asked him, what was the message to your team at the half? And he said it was simple. We need to stick to the fundamentals. We need to remember what we practiced all week long. And he said there's still 30 minutes of football, and I told these guys they need to get the momentum up. They need to prove what they can do. Uh, we have talked about how young Illinois is, and of course it's been a recurring theme. Charlie Strong's team, not quite as young, but certainly very inexperienced. This is a team that returned just 3% of its passing yards and 8% of its rushing yards from last year. Jay, you mentioned Quinton Flowers, who was an unbelievable talent for them. Quinton Flowers is gone. I mean, I'll tell you how special he was. Quarterback who left as their all-time leading rusher dynamic weapon Willie Taggart hats off to him recruited very well left the cupboard full for Charlie Strong and there you see Terrence Horn I think it's an absolute certainty at this point he will not get to return this kick as the Illini kicking off from the 50 after the penalty at the end of the half on South Florida so assess there on the kick South Florida will take over at the 25 you see the Bulls Actually, with more total yards, but it is the Illini on top. Turnovers a big part of the story, Chad. Penalties, turnovers. I'll tell you what, those two things have come at critical times for the Bulls. In the red zone, had a tripping penalty. They've also had turnovers while they were driving to score late in the first half. That's been the difference. You see that Illinois has been out game, but Illinois has played cleaner football as far as penalties and turnovers. See what the Bulls have here. Blake Barnett. Again, the transfer, handing it off to Cronkrite, Jordan Cronkrite, Jordan Cronkrite, up near midfield. So a big gain on first down by Cronkrite, 24 yards. And South Florida setting the tone early here in the second half. You no, know, South Florida doesn't have like an actual physical mascot here. It might be Jordan Cronkrite. He just bowled over Michael Marques. This time it's Barnett. And he gets it into Illinois territory, and it is Marquez dragging him down there. Good redemption there by Marquez. Again, a defensive switch for Hardy Nickerson. They've got out of the man-to-man -man coverage. He's put six in the box. They've gone to five in the box. And lately, Cronkite has been running wild in that defense. Now they're going to go back to man-to-man -to, -man to negate the run. On second and eight, Barnett fires the left side, has a man that is complete. It's Darnell Solomon, and he is down inside the Illinois 35. Now that's the arm that made Blake Barnett a five-star recruit out of high school. Opposite hash, deep comeback on the opposite sideline, first down. Barnett fakes the give, and then he is swallowed up. A couple of Alana there. Tamir Oliver, Bobby Roundtree combining to make that tackle. I don't know if you're South Florida, if that's a winning play. If that's what you really want to do is run Blake Barnett on a little fake, the screen, and then a quarterback run. 
not really his strong suit. Cronkite's running the ball well. Get the ball to Wilcox and McCants. Your two inside receivers, that's where your mismatches are. Loss of three, so second and 13. Barnett, plenty of time, and he fires it incomplete. But what did we see with Blake Barnett? He was looking for St. Felix on that play. Not a lot of touch on balls. He threw that way too hard on the inside slant route. Just 50% and two interceptions. Barnett played very well against Georgia Tech, struggling today against his Illinois defense. Just one of six on third downs on the Bulls. This is a third and 13. Barnett, it was batted at the line. And then Mitchell Wilcox unable to corral it. Would have had a lot of work to do to get the first down as it is. Well, I think it was Bobby Roundtree again, able to get the deflection. Watch Roundtree sitting there on your screen, working on Eric Mays. Can't get there, but gets his hands up. Wilcox almost makes the play off the deflection. But again, a good third down stand. As you said, the Bulls struggling on third down, much because of the defensive line play of Illinois. So Schneider on the kick. This one angling and misplayed there by South Florida. Illinois catching a break. It'll be a touchback. 16-7 fighting Illini over the Bulls. Back at Soldier Field and talked about the vulnerability of this run defense for South Florida. And we're seeing the Illini backs piling up some nice numbers, Jay. Yeah, Rayvon Bono, the power back. Reggie Corbin showed incredible bursts. And Mike Epstein not only running the ball in big plays, but had a big screen play as well. Probably the most complete back is Mike Epstein. And he's the one in there right now. Now, Rod Smith, the offensive coordinator, telling us this week they wanted to increase Epstein's workload as he comes back from injury. And we've seen that here today. First and ten. It is Epstein getting it. Actually, it's a keeper. I beg your pardon. Rivers with it. And he takes it up around the 30-yard line. And yeah, a late penalty flag on there. Good ball handling there. Oh, yeah, threw me off, that's for sure. Oh, it looked like time. it yeah. did a little bit of a number on the Bulls as well. As Rivers able to gain 10, there is a flag, though. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number 89. 10-yard penalty. First down. So this one coming back. Correction, number 9. That's on Sam Mays, third penalty for the Illini. It, it looks as if they gave him credit for the first down and then backed him up 10 yards, so it is first and 10 for the Illini. From the 20-yard line. This time it is Epstein, and he is brought down by Ronnie Hodgins behind the line. I tell you what, Kendrick Green excels in run blocking, but struggled on that play. Allowed Bronson and Kevin Kegler, the defensive tackles, to get penetration right into the lap of Epstein. Second and 12. Illinois changing things up here. Rivers going to throw, fires it into traffic, nearly intercepted. He was looking for Dominic Stampley. Vincent Davis there on the coverage for the Bulls, and Davis got the worst of it as he is banged up. And Rivers got away with one there. The Bulls changed coverage right before the snap. Watch the replay here. Roberts has got him in his sight. We'll see right there, Davis collides with his own man. Stampley had a chance to come down with that. Just a drag across the middle. Lots of traffic right there. Dominique Stampley, they, they need more. Illinois needs more out of their slot receivers. Since Mike Dudek went down, Carlos Sandy, Dominique Stampley have filled in. They're not getting much production, and they need somebody to fill in. We see Davis walk off the field. Davis, a freshman out of Jacksonville. Jacksonville, Florida, not Jacksonville, Illinois. Yeah, there's a big difference there. There is a little bit of a difference. And you see Illinois, the very good first half is they had started slowly. Now need to see if they can finish well. And MJ Rivers, to his credit, didn't light it up, but he did enough. He protected the football, made enough completions of a good first half for Illinois. So third and 12, don't want a mistake here if you're Rivers. And a conservative dump off there to 
Epstein, he is dragged down. And the Alana will be forced to punt on Nico Sautel there for South Florida. Good call by defensive corner Brian Jean Marie. Usually brought pressure on third down the first time in the first half. That adjustment rush three, Nico Sautel spies Epstein, able to make a tackle for loss. It's to bring out Blake Hayes. Blake Hayes, the Aussie, on to boot it away and does just that. A good kick. As he drives McCants back to the 30 yard line, feels it there and is checked down right away. Kirby Joseph gets a good coverage out from the freshman and Joseph, the Orlando Florida native. 52 yards on this punt, no return, thanks to the nice tackle. Next Saturday, BTN Tailgate returns as Jerry DiNardo, Howard Griffith, Spice Adams, and Michelle McMahon join me on campus in Iowa City to set the stage for the huge West Division showdown between Iowa and Wisconsin. It's BTN Tailgate presented by GEICO, Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern, right here on BTN. First down for South Florida, its own 30-yard line, and a flag on the Bulls who continue. All stop. To struggle with the penalties. That was on Eric Mays. Again, the second of the game, false start. So Blake Barnett and company will be staring at a first and 15. He's got Jordan Cronk right alongside him. Barnett has some time, fires it complete. That is Stanley Clairvaux. Illinois gets Cam Watkins back in the game with the tackle. It's a big get for Illinois. Obviously, out the first half because of targeting in the second half of the Western Illinois game. Probably their most experienced defensive back. Barnett going to throw again, and he's got his man. Enough for the first down. That's St. Felix, the red shirt freshman, had a huge game against Elon. 143 receiving yards, third catch for him here today. On first down, the give is to Cronkite, and he is right around midfield. Del Sean Phillips, the tackle for Illinois. South Florida move the ball effectively in between the 30s. When they get into the red zone or close to the red zone, they've shot themselves in full of penalties. On second down, Barnett has St. Felix again. And South Florida on the move. Two young, very talented players. St. Felix, along with Jartavius Martin, battling on the edges. 42. And not much there up the middle for Cronkite. Kenyon Jackson, a junior out of Little Rock, Arkansas, with the tackle for the Illini. Guy who Hardy Nickerson really praised when we talked to him this week, loves his motor. Son of the former Pro Bowl tight end, Keith Jackson. Long and storied NFL career. On second and seven, wide open, the tight end Wilcox, and he is down inside the 20. Playing 10 yards off of Wilcox is the safety, and finally, Barnett takes advantage of it. Wilcox is more than used possession tight end. He's a run after catch tight end. He's a weapon for the Bulls. 20 yards on that play. Front right track. Jamal Woods. Jamal Woods, if there's a surprising defensive player for the Island Line, it's Jamal Woods has played in, has played defensive tackle. Lovey Smith said in his press conference was the defensive player of the game. A lot of times you don't see the defensive lineman what they do. He's very disruptive, Jamal Woods. Give him a chance with the injury to Jamal Lyon. Second tackle for loss for the Atlanta. Dave Small in there, running back for South Florida. Barnett has a man in pursuit behind him. And Barnett alertly throws it away. Barnett does not look comfortable. Had plenty of time. His feet were antsy. He 
also had Stanley Clairvaux wide open in the back of the end zone when he scrambled, was unable to locate him, and brings up a third and long. Third and 13. This crowd here at Soldier Field. Coming to life. The Illini on top 16-7. Looking to get to 3-0. and And a penalty on South Florida. Well stopped. As the Bulls continue to look rattled. Marcus Norman this time. The guilty party. Take a look at 77. Norman, right tackle. Easy call. Might be a little antsy. Roundtree's kind of got the better of him a couple times. You got Bobby Roundtree coming out to the third down. You're a little antsy to get off your stance. So now third and 18 for a team with a shaky kicking game. Barnett going to give it to Cronkite. Cronkite inside the 20. Well short of the first down. And what do you do now, Jay? I mean, you, you got to be able to attempt a field goal from here, don't you? You'd think after that call, you might think, though, it was four down territory. Maybe they were trying to center the ball, get a little bit closer, and get a field goal out of it. Again, 30 to 30, the Bulls move the ball. They get down into the red zone, and negative plays, penalties set them back. So Weiss has missed from 44, this one from 35. This one, well, we got a flag on the play. It was good. Let's see what the flag's about. It looked like someone moved in the offensive line. It was going to be a false start. False start. Offense, number 93. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. You can see just the frustration here from Charlie Strong as his team making mistake after mistake. You see the right side just going to flinch here, right there, the right end. Flinches in his stance, and that's enough to get the full start. So now they back Weiss up. He'll try it from 40. Out of the hold of Schneider. And this one is no good. So the penalty cost Charlie Strong's team 16-7. Illinois still up two scores. Illinois up 16-7. A very different story than when we saw these two teams go at it last year in Tampa. South Florida just pounded the Illini. Had 680 total yards, their most ever against an FBS opponent. Three players over 100 yards rushing. Quinton Flowers accounted for five touchdowns, 47-23. But Lovey Smith's team getting the better of this battle, Jay. What a difference a year makes. A year older for Illinois. Reggie Corbin, short game there. I think it's fair to mention South Florida lost a ton. I mean, this is not the same South Florida team as a year ago. Although I don't think very many people would have predicted this. This was still a team that people felt good about coming into this game. Three defensive linemen in the NFL. Augie Sanchez, one all-time lead tacklers, gone. Tough to replace that. In Illinois with a backup quarterback in there. And Rivers will end around here. Carlos Sandy, or I beg your pardon, Dominic Stampley for the Illini. And Stampley with a little razzle-dazzle from Rod Smith, still short of the first down. Yeah, a little tempo here to try to get a first down, hand it off to Corbin and get it quick. They do just that, and they get the first down as Corbin staying on his feet and knocked out of bounds. First down for the Illini. Rod Smith. To get to the line quick, let's hand it off to Corbin and then show we get that third down. And Corbin has the speed to break out. See, Nico Santel working on uh, Sautel working on the Darien Low, able to get the corner because Sautel peaked inside. A 41-yard line, Illinois. Moving the chains. Again, MJ Rivers getting the start with AJ Bush injured. The hamstring injury last week. This time they fake the end around, and Rivers dragged down. Sautel is there. Greg Reeves as well for the Bulls. Rivers wanted Smalling, who's limping a little bit coming off the field, but wanted Smalling, but saw the safety coming over late. Sautel 
to see on the left side of your screen here. He just has the back, man. The man sees that he blocks, and then he's going to blitz. That's called the green dog. The green dog, the guy you got the back in the backfield block, you just go ahead to the rush, get yourself set. Second and 19. They keep it on the ground with Corbin, big hole. Corbin, the 45. Corbin has the first down. Belcheski on the counter. What patience. Watch your left guard, your right guard, right tackle. And watch the patience. Belcheski gets the block on McGee. Corbin has the patience and the vision to set up his block for the first down. 20 yards on that carry in Illinois into South Florida territory. <laughs> Epstein now in there running back for the Illini. They're going to run some option. Here's Epstein on the pitch. And Epstein, a modest gain. And we have a flag on the play. It looks like they're going to get it on Mozzie Wilkins there coming over. And maybe a little bit in the extracurriculars. Was it because he was close to the out of bounds or was it leading with the head? I wasn't able to see exactly from this angle what the call will be. We'll see. Personal foul, what's called a tackle. Defense, number two, 15 yard penalty on the match first day. The 11 penalty on South Florida. So you see the horse collar. And he, McGee got his hand up onto the collar of Epstein, and that's why they outlined that. The way that Epstein fell out, made famous by Roy Williams, who played for the Cowboys, this is why this call got enacted, because you can get injured very easily if you tackle someone like that. Again, it was McGee there that they flagged, not Mozzie Wilkins. As it is, first down from the 31 for the Illini. Epstein. They got a flag on the play. In the vicinity of a hold. Holding offense, number 65. 10-yard penalty. That's exactly what it is. Doug Kramer, the sophomore from Suburban Hinsdale. Played well thus far, Kramer. Hate to see that negative play. Illinois is not trying to trick anybody. They're running counter right, counter left, ran counter again. Would have been a good game, but wasn't for the penalty on Kramer. Now, Rod Smith told us this week he's still working on his technique. And I would say that's an evidence. <laughs> there you go. Right there. So now a first down in 20 for the Fighting Illini. Already with a two-score lead. Mike Epstein, Sotel wraps him up. Not much there for the Illini sophomore. Get a second and long situation. You just want to get a chunk of that yardage back. Get yourself in field goal range. And you're pretty close with McLaughlin. Always look for screens and or draws. If it's an empty set like this with not a lot of backs in the game, I'm thinking quarterback draw. Epstein, 80 yards rushing so far in this game. The Illini continue to move it well. Rivers fires incomplete. I wondered if they were going to use Epstein in more of a receiver role. Looked to be not on the same page as Rivers and so Really a, a question of what do you want? Do you want the first down or do you want a field goal if you're Illinois? The field goal puts you up by 12 here. The third and 10. We'll see what the Illini do. Rivers. Plenty of time. Good work by that line. And now Rivers, eluding tacklers, throws downfield and is complete. It is going to be short of the first down, but it gives Illinois a chance at a much easier field goal. You talk about dangerous, all the time in the world, great protection. I thought he's dead to rights here, able to get out of the grasp of the defensive line, and then he throws it over the middle against the grain. I thought that was a pick waiting to happen, able to find Epstein for a doable field goal in terms of McLaughlin. So now a 41-yard attempt for McLaughlin, who's already hit three. And remember, South Florida has missed two. I mean, in essence, that's the difference in this game. McLaughlin 
straight and true. It looked like it nicked its way through as it hit the upright. And the Illini on top now, 19 to 7. Timeout. And McLaughlin getting a little chuckle out of that one is used all of the upright here. Never a doubt. 19-7, Illinois by 12. Time for our All-State Mayhem moment. Delshawn Phillips providing it, Jay. Jake Hansen the deflection. Then Delshawn goes up just to pick the return. Physical. Fast. Big play at the end of the first half that really gave the momentum. Look at him just throw the tacklers down. Delshawn Phillips, big play. Got his hands on the ball for the third game in a row. Has already made four field goals. A new career best continues to keep the ball out of the hands of Terrence Horn, who brought two back for touchdowns last week. Let's go to Mike Hall in our studio. Dave, we got a potential top 10 upset brewing. BYU leading the Badgers, but Taiwan Deal with about 12 minutes and change to play ties it up with a five yard touchdown run in Madison. It is 21 all now in the fourth. Uh, how about that? The Badgers, 41 straight non-conference home wins. The longest streak in the nation. The fifth longest for an FBS team in the last 100 years. But in jeopardy here, keep you updated on that one. Jordan Cronkite spinning his way forward. And he is dragged down. Daylight Harding providing the final touches on that tackle. Been impressed for the most part by the defensive ends of Illinois. Pressing the line of scrimmage against the big tackles from South Florida, making those runs both to the outside, allowing help to get there. Second and eight for the Illini. Blake Barnett fires, and it is complete. Darnell Solomon, that he was potentially bobbling it on the way down, but able to secure it before he goes out of bounds. Interesting, South Florida leaving Wilcox and Cronkite in the backfield to protect, to give Barnett time to find a receiver. Pressure again from the Illini, and down he goes. Dele Harding coming in on the sack. How about Dele Harding? He said they're going to either back and the tight end in. They get him out now. You'll see him right here, Dele Harding. Just going to come on the pressure, and nobody picks him up. I think that's Jordan Cronkite. He's got to pick him up. He goes out for the route instead of the pass protection. Big negative play for the Illini defense. South Florida behind the chains. Barnett fires it complete. His big tight end, Wilcox there. We'll pass the original line of scrimmage as we check in with Allen. Well, guys, on the sidelines, I've been watching the defensive line coach, Austin Clark. What he was saying to his defensive line before they stepped back out on the field, he said, just be patient, make sure to get your hands up, and as you can see, they're doing just that. Here's Barnett on third down, able to complete it into Illinois territory. Wilcox there. And we look like uh, we may have an injured Illini on the field there. Actually, two injured Illini on the field. Looks like they collided. A little friendly fire action. And one of them is Kendall Smith there on the left. Not clear who it is on the other side. I believe Daylay Harding. See Hanson on the coverage with Wilcox. You'll see Smith. And then Daylay Harding ran into, looks like Daylay Harding went into Jake Hanson. Hard to see what happened to Smith or Harding. Good to see Smith walk off on his own power. Harding still down. Harding after the big sack. Daylay Harding being tended to. We'll be right back. Soldier Field, you see Daylay Harding still down for the Illini, has rolled over, but in some pretty obvious pain, Jay. And Daley Harding, usually the Sam linebacker, you'll see him here, he comes in, makes a hit right there, physical hit on Wilcox. I think that's really probably what the injury's from rather than running into Hanson. Looked like he was filling in for Delshawn Phillips a bit. He could also play the middle linebacker. 
Uh, Harding, one of the captains of this Illinois team, special teams captain, was sixth on the team in tackles a year ago. A young man who actually originally committed to Michigan under Brady Hoke, but then that offer went away in the transition to Jim Harbaugh, and you just hope he is all right. Make his way to his feet here. It's good to see him sit up. And to Allie's point about the defensive line, the coach, Austin Clark, saying be patient. I tell you what, they have been, done a very good job of not only putting pressure on Burnett, getting to him a couple times, making him feel uncomfortable, but getting their hands up. When they can't get there, they've got their hands up a couple times in critical situations for deflection as we see. Daley Harding stand up on his own power. See the numbers on Harding at the sack moments ago. So good to see him, as he said, walking off this field. Gets a nice round of applause here from the Illinois fans. South Florida just converting on a third down there. Blake Barnett had been 0 of 4 on third down before that one. And so Charlie Strong's team trying to get something going offensively. We told you about this earlier today, but it bears repeating. 32 straight games with at least 20 points for South Florida. The longest streak in the nation it is very much in jeopardy, but they'll need at least 20 to win this game. Making the give to Cronkright. Throw on the left side. Has a man, but he overshoots Clairvaux. Say what, they're really challenging Barnett to throw the football. They had 10 defenders within two yards of the line of scrimmage and one safety back. All of them hugged up on the line of scrimmage. Barnett has man-to-man -man coverage looking for St. Felix. And Felix has him beat. St. Felix has him beat. Not able to complete the throw. On second down. That one is complete. And right around the first down marker. That is Wilcox. Jartavius Martin just a little slow breaking on that. Barnett never saw Jartavius Martin. That could have been an interception if he broke soon. They will mark it a smidge short. So third down. And they get the first down. Cronkright with the short gain, but enough to move the chain. So Hardy Nickerson, Charlie Strong. Hardy Nickerson showing a little defensive changeup going back to the man-to-man. -man. They went zone earlier. Final 30 seconds of this third quarter. Barnett over the middle through the hands that time of Wilcox and kind of what you were talking about a lot on that ball there, Jay. This doesn't have much touch, Dave. I've been really disappointed in the amount of touch we've seen with Blake Barnett. He tries to rifle everything in there. He's got some veteran receivers, the Wilcox and the Cans. They're having trouble coming down with the ball. The second and ten. Plenty of time has a man wide open. And again, South Florida able to move the chains with Wilcox. He's lucky he threw that Isaiah Gay was coming off the edge in a heartbeat. But Wilcox is their go-to guy in critical situations along the cans. Looks a little shaken up there as he hobbles off. And this is where the offense has really sputtered for the Bulls. Now Wilcox getting tended to after his seventh catch. Far and away a new career high. He had four in the win over Elon. Seven in this game. His team in a hole though. The Illini, Lovey Smith, try to finish this thing off 19 to 7 in favor of Illinois. And a lot of action here in the Illini, up by 12 as we head to the fourth. A Chamber of Commerce Day along the shores of Lake Michigan, Illinois, leading South Florida 19 to 7. As we head into the fourth quarter, 11th play of this drive for the Bulls. Barnett rolling to his left, throws into the end zone. Solomon, and it is a touchdown. Darnell Solomon. There is a flag, though, in the offensive backfield. 
no foul for offensive holding on the play. It's on the play is a touchdown. And so an erroneous flag as it turns out. South Florida back to within one score. Best throw we've seen Blake Barnett throw all day. And he finds Darnell Summers under pressure from Delshawn Phillips in his face. And there was a hold there by 55. Eric Mays, and they picked up the flag. You see Solomon battling on Cam Watkins. It looked like he got his shoulder pad a little bit, but let go in time. Referee picked it up. Kobe Weiss on to attempt the extra point. The place kicking's been an adventure for the Bulls. He hits that one, and they are within five now. One play into the fourth quarter. How about Blake Barnett That's with the response to Darnell Solomon? Touchdown Bulls. The USF fans with something to cheer about their team now within five thanks to the touchdown grab from Darnell Solomon. 19-14, we'll see whether or not the Illini have a response. They've been held to 55 yards here in the second half. And the kick, a fair catch called for, so that'll bring the ball out to the 25. Again, for those who maybe aren't aware of it early in the season, if you call for a fair catch on a kick inside the 25, that is where you get the ball. So the Illini will start there. There is a flag, though. Offside. Kicking team, number 21. Wow. A fair catch was awarded, placing the ball at the 25-yard line. Additional five yards for the penalty. First to 10 from the 30. I mean, offsides on the kickoff, Jay. You only usually see offsides the kickoff on like an onside kick. You know it's a bad day penalty wise for Charlie Strong and the Bulls when your kickoff team is offsides. I mean, think about the adventures they have had in kicking. They've missed field goals. They kick two kickoffs out of bounds. They're offside on another one. I mean, it's you, crazy. You could make the argument the offense and defense that outplayed Illinois, but their special teams have not, and they've turned the ball over and silly penalties. A nope. dozen penalties now. Let's not forget, they had 31 combined last time they played. Penalties, that is. Here's Rivers. Going to dump it off. And Richie Corbin with absolutely nowhere to go. Mozzie Wilkins, the senior out of Tampa there to make the tackle well behind the line of scrimmage. I like the call by Rod Smith. Though, rather than run the football, get the ball to somebody in space. Mix it up a little bit. Just a good play by Wilkins to come down and tackle Corbin, who's not easy to tackle in the open field. Loss of seven there for the Illini. So behind the chains here. They give it to Corbin. Corbin, big hole. And he's back to the 35-yard line, setting up a third and manageable for Illinois. Ronnie Hoggins there for the tackle. How about Cerny and Vidarian Lowe pulling around? You see him right here. Just pulling around, making away. It's actually Cerny and Kendrick Green. And Corbin, another big gain on the counter play. Critical third down here. Three of 11 so far. Rivers. Rivers going to be dragged down. Kevin Kegler. The internal clock has to go off. You have to get rid of this football. He has time. Decent protection for Greg Reeves comes off the edge a bit. Kegler comes on and finishes him off. Reeves on the bottom. You got to throw that football away. Rookie mistake. Tyree McCants is deep. It takes an Illinois roll inside the 20 yard line, and the Illini urging it forward. That's where it'll stop around the 17. Illini by five. Time out. In the Chicago Bears home stadium today, remember it was back in 2002 when the Bears played their home games in the Illini home stadium at Memorial Stadium as this building was renovated. It's not a great year for the Illini, finishing 4 and 12 under Dick Duran, but a lot of good memories for young kids growing up in Champaign like a Jay Lehman. Got to see the Bears and Patriots as a 17 year old. First down, Jordan Cronkite. Nice gain on that carry. For the 
transfer from Florida who's had himself a really nice game. Over 100 yards. On second and five, Barnett. Looking right, he's got a man. And still on his feet, St. Felix. Delino Ware eventually knocks him down. That's really been the route they banged Jartavius Martin on as he's guarding St. Felix. That deep comeback. Nine yards and a first down. The fake to Cronkrite. Barnett. Time St. Felix kind of got tripped up. St. Felix open. If he stayed on his feet, I think Barnett completes that pass, even though it was a little bit high. To his credit, Barnett's responded in the second half. Had a tough first half. The two turnovers. He's looked better, especially throwing the ball to Mitchell Wilcox. On second and ten. Barnett going to change the play. Five guys in the box now on no changes. Much there on the short run by Cronkite. A lot of switching between defenses here. Illinois showed zone, then they brought in James Knight to help on the run, and this brings up a critical third down. We gotta look out for Mitchell Wilcox, number 89, second from the top of your screen. Barnett has time, no one to throw it to. Barnett overthrows his man, and the Illini hold. Well, Barnett wanted Wilcox at the sticks, guarded well by Jake Hansen. Charlie Strong knows that was a big series to take back possibly the lead. They have some momentum right now. Carlos Sandy going deep for the Illini. It's Jake Stone who will punt it for South Florida. Stone's kick bounces out of bounds. Illinois continues to have the edge in the kicking game here. As we remind you, the Illini kind of a short turnaround for them. They will play on Friday on FS1, taking out Trace McSorley and number 11 Penn State conference opener in Champaign. Big Ten football, Penn State, Illinois, Friday, 9 Eastern, only on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Possible matchup with two 3-0 teams. A pair on Illinois finishes. And now they've got Epstein and they've got Corbin in the backfield. Alert to something up there. Well, they said Corbin in motion. They fake it to Epstein, throw it out to Corbin. And Corbin unable to... Make his man miss. Not much there for the Illini. Last two drives. Rod Smith trying to throw the ball in a safe way. Threw a screen play to Corbin. First down last drive. They swing it out to Corbin here. Looks for them to go back to Epstein on the run play. Probably the counter. Pretty conservative here offensively. Again, trying to hold on to this lead with their backup quarterback, MJ Rivers. Going the whole way today, A.J. Bush. Still nursing that hamstring. This is Corbin. Corbin, out to about the 36-yard line. He'll be a few yards short and set up a third down. But Corbin and Epstein, to their credit, have been patient, have found the hole. They've had most success running behind Alec Grady and Alex Palczewski, the right guard and right tackle. Both Corbin and Epstein remain on the field. They'll mark it at the 35. So third down and four. Big play here for the fighting Illini from their own 35. Rivers dumps it off. And they can't get there. Carlos Sandy on the reception. Well defended, though, by South Florida. Fourth down. Read that tunnel screen perfectly. Sandy tried to get upfield to his credit, get north and south ASAP. Just came up short of that first down. And another three and out for the Illini offense. They could have desperately needed a first down on that drive. Second straight three and out. Hayes' punt to McCants. Another really good one. Can the Illini get there? They cannot. It goes into the end zone. 
Man, he has a serious leg. A monster leg. Blake Hayes, the Aussie, dropping bombs out of the sky. All on BTN is brought to you in part by State Farm. Here to help life go right. Navy Pier, which long ago was the home to the branch campus of the University of Illinois at Chicago. Of course, has since moved a little bit west of there. Now, an entertainment mecca, and it's been an entertaining game for the Illinois fans here at Soldier Field, their team on top 19-14. I just love how much I learned actually calling my one game a year with you. I learned all kinds of facts, Navy Pier. You did not know that. Did not know that. Sure, the pier. People used to go to the pier. Tyree McCants. The gain on first down for South Florida. McCants built more like a fullback than a slot receiver. 5'11, 240. He is a load, especially when it's a hookful at his team. And they got to get lined up because here come the Bulls. On first down, Barnett. Gonna go deep. Jartavius Martin, he's with him stride for stride. He just missed times his jump. Watch him go up too soon and gets out left on the 50-50 ball by St. Felix. What a talented kid the redshirt freshman is. USF in business. Crot Crite driven back. Delano Ware, the freshman for the Illini. So it's about finishing for the Bulls. They've been down in this area a couple times. As we look at this big completion from Barnett to St. Felix. 50-50 ball just goes up and over. Jartavius Martin. 55 yards on that play. One yard on the most recent play. So second and nine. They fake the give. Barnett overthrows Tyree McCants. Stanley Green on tough duty on McCants. Had his left arm a little bit on McCants, but no call. Will overthrow by Blake Barnett. Doesn't really give McCants that much of a chance to make a play on that. Big third down. Third and nine. The Illini fans on their feet here at Soldier Field trying to urge this team on to what would be a very significant win. Got to cover Mitchell Wilcox, 89 in motion. Barnett. Barnett, got to be brought down. And so now, as Barnett looks like he may be a little shaken up, a decision for Charlie Strong. It looks like he's going to try a field goal here, which again gets you to the point where you could win it with another field goal. I still think with the field goal issues, you have to be ready for a fake. You have to be ready for a hard count to try to get an easier fourth and two rather than a fourth and six. It is Kobe Weiss, 26 yards. Has missed his previous attempts. This one is good. And so you back within two. It's 19-17. Fighting Illini. Set up for some drama here at Soldier Field. 19-17. Illinois clinging to a two-point advantage. The lovey beards are out in force. Clinging like that beard's clinging to that face. South Florida to kick it off. Halfway through this fourth quarter. This is a short kick, and the Illini are going to try to return it. Carlos Sandy out to about the 35-yard line. So good field position for Illinois. And now let's see if they can get something going offensively. There is a flag right around the 28. Looked like 83 Bobby Walker after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Kitchen team number 50. Wow. Receiving team number 52. Right. Receiving team number 52. That is his first unsportsmanlike conduct for stopping on a player. That is a significant difference right there because penalties have been a huge part of the story for Charlie Strong's team. Not nearly as much for Illinois, but this is one they could ill afford here, Jay. Yeah, 52, Io Shabano, for stomping on a player. 
you just can ill afford if you're Illinois to have something like that. Negates a pretty solid return. The old switcheroo there from Tracy Jones, the official, and a pretty significant difference from the point of view of the Illini fans. And now can they get something going offensively? Look, 62 yards of offense, three first downs here in the second half for Illinois. That's a 30-yard swing, and Lovey Smith wants more of an explanation on what actually happened. They were going to have the ball on the 50, if it was a penalty, with the return to the 39. Now it's back to the 20. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Epstein and Corbin in the backfield alongside MJ Rivers. First career start for the true freshman from Texas. The handoff to Epstein across the 20. Epstein still on his feet, has a first down. So a good game for the Illini, and they move the chains. Epstein is slippery. A lot of times you don't think he's going to make it through the hole. He not only does that, he tight ropes the sideline for a big game. Palczewski with the kick out on the defensive end, Greg Leaves. Watch him tight rope the sideline, get some extra yards. 14 yards on that play for Epstein. Nearing 100 yards. Went over for the second time in his career last week. This is Corbin. And Corbin's got a big hole. Corbin has a first down. Illinois continues to get to the second level. The linemen, Kendrick Green, Cerny, Kramer, getting to the second level. Good block by Sam Mays on the edge. That allows Corbin to have a big game. 11 yards on that play. First down a line from the 45. Alana in no hurry here. The clock's certainly their ally as they try to get their first 3 0 start since 2011. Rivers to Epstein. And Epstein brought down around midfield. Good solid gain on first down for Sautel. Makes the tackle. If you're Illinois, you can ill afford to have a penalty. If you're going to run the ball, try to run the clock out. You can't have a hold. You can't have a false start in this critical time. South Florida to their credit, stacking. The line of scrimmage trying to stop the run. This is Epstein again. And he runs right into Kelvin Pinckney, the sophomore from Sarasota, Florida. Wrapping him up. The run stopper of that defensive line crew. You can see why. He takes up some room. Just a, just a few yards. So now third down for the Illini. Big play here for Illinois. Five and a half minutes to go in this game at Soldier Field. South Florida continues to bring 54, a middle linebacker on pressure, a run blitz pressure. Will the Illini throw it? No, they give it to Epstein. Epstein has the first down. the left side of that offensive line just dominating Kendrick Green making plays Cerny's been in there as well for the Darian low ran behind it three straight times for the first down FC now over 100 yards for the second straight game as Corbin goes in motion and it's Rivers and Rivers inside the 40 he is piled up a good solid game for Illinois on first down <laughs> So if you're Illinois, you've got to be at least thinking field goal. If you're getting in field goal range, what we've seen from Chase McLaughlin, you obviously want a touchdown. Most importantly, you want to keep the clock moving. Three first downs on this drive for the Alana. They had three in the entire half before that. South Florida looks tired. Hands on the hips. Continue to bring run-stopping blitzes to no avail. Corbin alongside Rivers. This is Corbin. Eludes the first man, eludes the second, but eventually dragged down. And there's that guy again, Pinkney coming over, showing up his mobility to make the tackle. Looks like he might be a bit banged up, though. The 
to admire the hustle from Pinkney getting over there. Hopefully he's okay. And if, if you're Illinois, you really couldn't afford a negative play there because you're you're in field goal range. We watch a replay. Good effort by Corbin. See, looks like he fell on the foot of the defender. Hopefully it's just a bruise on the big fella. So now third and ten after a loss of five there. Again, we hope Pinkney is okay. So he intended to. So we know we know that McLaughlin's range is at least 54 yards. So you need to get to about the 37 to be in that 54-yard range. We don't we don't know if he can kick farther than that. You look at what Epstein's done. The exact same amount of rushing yards as he had last week. Has a knack for the big play. They've used him sparingly the first two weeks, and I think they were saving him for this game. Very good player. Season cut short last year because of a foot injury after the fifth game of the year. I hear you. I mean, really interesting situation. What do you do here if you're Rod Smith? Do you try to get the ball into position? Where you feel a little bit more confident in McLaughlin, obviously you'd love to get the first down, but are you thinking five or six yards is good here? Well, when you have Rayvon Bonner in the game, it looks like you have him in either in for protection, because you don't have Reggie Corbin in or Epstein to throw the ball to out of the backfield. So you're going to think it's probably a pass from MJ Rivers. Just can't have a mistake here from the freshman. Rivers is going to throw it. Rivers buying some time, looking downfield. Almost caught there by Barker, who made a beautiful dive at it. There's a flag. It might be a hold on the Illini, and in fact, that's what it is. Question holding offense, number 72. Penalties decline. Fourth down. They decline the penalty and will force the Illini to punt it away. MJ Rivers needs to trust what he saw, what he sees. He's had Carlos Sandy wide open. Didn't throw it in time. He had the hold as well. We said we couldn't have negative. Elmer could have negative plays. Couldn't have penalties. They had both. Now Blake Hayes, who's been so good in this game. We'll see if he can pin South Florida deep. And the Cans calls for the fair catch. Not a great punt given Hayes' ability, but they still have it at the 15. Time now for Making the Right Play, presented by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Mike Epstein has been making the right plays all day long. That was his best run today. Able to take it the distance for Illinois' first touchdown. Remember, that drive was the three-play, 80-yard drive that really set the tone for the game. And now Epstein over 100 yards, but it's on the Illinois defense. They come up with a stop, 341 left. South Florida, Illinois have all three timeouts, and the crowd is fired up at Soldier Field. A defense which was humbled a year ago by the Bulls, 680 yards. Now trying to come up big. This is Jordan Cronkite. Picks up three. Jake Hansen there for the Illini. And Cronkite is still down. And the trainers come out to tend to him. Anytime you can have a pause and play on an offense like this, it, it helps the defense. We had a couple like this. You know, some cramping up, some penalties, some, some reviews. Always helps the defense. I've been impressed with the linebacker play. I think Jake Hansen, I think Delshawn Phillips played very, has played very well today. And credit the guys up front. The Illini crowd not necessarily buying into the Jordan Cronkite injury. I'm, I'm not sure what Cronkite has to gain from faking an injury. It's not like he's on defense. I think it looks legitimate to me. The top rusher out of the game. They bring in Dave Small, the redshirt freshman who's played sparingly here today. Wilcox 
sets a first down at the 35-yard line. Yeah, Wilcox manned up on Jake Hansen, a mismatch. Hansen, great run stop, but struggles in coverage a little bit against Mitchell Wilcox, and they've had them matched up all half long. Eighth catch of the game for Wilcox. First down now, Barnett. No one open, Barnett throws it up there, and it is caught. Tyree McCants coming down with it. Some pretty good coverage initially there from the Alana, but ultimately Barnett able to find his man for 25 yards. Second, team, second time you've seen a missed time jump by an Illinois defensive back. First it was Jartavius Martin, and the last big play to St. Felix, that was Tony Adams. Now the Bulls driving. Remember, a field goal would put them ahead, but once again, they shoot start. themselves in the foot I'll with their 13th penalty, penalty of the game. Saw William Atterbury call for the false start there. The junior backs his team up five yards. Sets up a first and 15 for the Illini. Clap right back in there. Or for the Bulls, I should say. Barnett going up top. Overthrows his man. He had St. Felix. Stanley Green providing the coverage. But Barnett wanted it all right there. And St. Felix had a step. Stanley Green was closing from the middle of the field. St. Felix so dangerous for a young player at a big game against Elon. You gotta think this is this is four down territory because your field goal kicker can't make it from this far out. Both teams still with their full allocation of timeouts. Barnett tried to force it in there nearly intercepted it was tony adams the sophomore on the coverage this is called deciding where i want to throw the ball before the play even begins as much to go to mccants he's double covered and tony adams is going to want that one back that would have been game over essentially although there's three timeouts left so not exactly going to go a long way for the line i third and long and the crowd rises to its feet third and long three for 12 on the day for the Bulls, and they move again. Marcus Norman, the Outland oh, Trophy candidate. Number 77, five yards penalty, third down. Not looking the part there, and it will be third and 20. That's the fourth or fifth. The false start pill, you'll see more Norman on the outside right there. He's going to jump. He'll jump on the left side, too. I don't know how much the noise has been affecting them. Here's Barnett. Steps up in the pocket and throws. Got a man wide open. Solomon, touchdown, USF. 50 yards. There is a flag on the play. It's on the Illini. And the touchdown no will stand. Touchdown is good. Forced on the kickoff. Cam Watkins on Solomon, and he's in zone. Just lets him go. You'll see the safety. Michael Marquez bite up. Marquez has got to help deep on that. Watkins thought he had help in the zone coverage. And that's a big... That's an understatement. That's a huge play. South Florida, it appears, will go for two here. Would put them up by six. Either way, the Illini are going to need a touchdown to win this game. Side, Blake Barnett. And they get the two points as St. Felix hauls it in. And Lovey Smith's team is down six. Six plays, 85 yards in a buck 17.
take a look at that touchdown pass and the breakdown in coverage. We'll see right here. He's going to throw the ball and freeze it. We'll see Marques is supposed to be back helping out. He bites up on this route. No one's there. Watkins is playing in the flat in a cover two coverage. And Solomon wide open. That's pitch and catch. Bobble a little bit. So we'll watch Solomon now on Watkins. Watch Watkins let him go. He's just playing in the flat. Marquez bites up on the Kants, who was the slot receiver. Touchdown and Darnell Solomon. Two touchdowns late. Oh, we talked about Illinois very banged up in the secondary. And again, you don't want to point fingers, but you mentioned it was Marquez there. One of three walk-ons who's played a significant role here early on in that secondary for Lovey Smith's team this year and has played well to his credit. But that hurts, and now you see whether Illinois can put something together. Penalty assessed on the kick, and given the misadventures in the kick game for South Florida, that is not insignificant. Let's look at the extra point that put him up by six. We'll see, he just looks off the coverage right there. He look off the coverage, he knows exactly where he's going to McCants. Excuse me, to St. Felix, and, and Barnett's excited. Has had the perfect game. It's been enough to give them a lead, and they extend their streak of 20-point outings. The longest in the country, and it continues. Mike Epstein in there running back. Here's Rivers. Can he lead the Illini to a magical touchdown here? Smalling. That's a good start for Illinois. All three timeouts. You've got to be, if you're an Illinois fan, you've got to be proud of Illinois, how they battled against the quality opponent today. You see A.J. Bush, who had been the starter for the first two games, out with the hamstring injury. Watching Rivers here. He fires complete. And the Illini have a first down. Daniel Parker on the receiving end. Sometimes a young quarterback can get in rhythm once he gets in the two-minute drill. See that on the first two throws. Here's Rivers under pressure, and he is sacked. Kirk Livingstone. Lovey elects not to use the timeout. You've just got to throw it away. The internal clock's got to go off, and now he does call the timeout. Timeout. I don't know what first shot timeout. He'll throw the second timeout. A loss of three on that play. See the pressure. Top of your screen is Kirk Livingstone working on Vidarian Lowe, able to get home. He was our impact player. See the Bulls fans coming alive here, and their team has done the same. 18 points here in the fourth quarter. And on top, 25 to 19, a USF team that has won six of its last seven against Power Five teams. The only loss to Florida State two years ago. He mentioned over that 20 point mark for the 33rd straight game, the longest streak in the nation. Can Illinois answer second and 13 after the timeout? Playing very soft on the outside receivers. Look for small. Rivers. Again, it is the tight end, Barker. It's interesting to me how soft the coverage is from Ronnie Huggins Jr. on the outside and also on these outside receivers. They look to me and will make Rivers throw into tight windows. They're not doing that right now, especially on the outside. Third and five for the Illini. There's the first down. Bernard Davis into South Florida territory. I think you've got to adjust if you're Charlie Strong. You've got to bring pressure, make Rivers beat you, and throw into tight coverage. They're playing a pre-bend zone, and right now Rivers is accurate enough to pick him apart. He's four of four on this drive. Into 47, Rivers under pressure. Able to get rid of it and complete it to Epstein down around the 40. Got a hurry as the clock continues to tick. They brought pressure that time. I look for Smalling at the bottom of your screen. Manned up. Pressure's off. This is Epstein. 
He will have the first down. Fifty-five seconds. The line. I need to go 35 yards. Need a touchdown and an extra point to win it. The true freshman, MJ Rivers, first career start. Rivers swallowed up. Kelvin Pickney, Kevin Kegler. Timeout. Illinois. Yeah, second charge timeout. 30 second timeout. And the Illini call timeout. Oh, Kegler, you see him right here. I believe he's right here on your screen. Hard to see where he lined up. He's going to come a little bit on a stunt here. No, he's right in the middle. That was Kegler. Just nobody really blocked him at all. To be honest, miscommunication. Don't forget the State Farm post game. Coming up next, my call, Jerry DiNardo, Howard Griffith, getting you caught up on everything around the conference, including a big-time upset as Wisconsin goes down to BYU in Madison. That long non-conference home winning streak that dated back to 2003 is over for the Badgers, a team they manhandled a year ago. 25-19. Illinois needs a touchdown. Rivers under pressure again, able to get rid of it. And it is caught. Ricky Smalling. Got to get to the line of scrimmage. They will spike it. And so now, the Alana faced with a fourth down. Not sure that's the ideal time to spike, but let's watch the play back. Rivers under duress. The arm strength to get it to Smalling, who goes up and gets it. To the catch. So it's fourth and four. Timeout. USF. Their first second half. The second so USF taking the time out here to make sure they can get aligned on defense. All right, so what do you do here? All options on the table for the Illini. You've got one timeout left. If you, you've got to move the sticks, that's number one. So what's your best play to get four yards? Who are your best players on the field? I would say your best players are Reggie Corbin, Ricky Smalling, and Mike Epstein. So what do you do? You got to get into your playmaker's hands. Doesn't matter. You got run. You got pass. It's all open in the playbook right now. Critical to get the first down. Then you probably have two plays after the first down. Yeah, I mean, you only have 20 seconds here, Jay. I mean, I know the first down. Obviously, if you don't get it, it ends the game. But are you looking further downfield here? Possibly because you need a touchdown. Yeah. Well, let's see what they do. Five wide receivers in the game for the Illini. They need four to keep this game going. 25-19. Rivers. They get the first down, Trenard Davis. So they throw it short. And now they're at the 20-yard line with 15 seconds to go. And Rivers... He's going to spike it again. 13 seconds. You've got two plays. You've also got a timeout. The full, the full playbook's open right now. You can run something over the middle. You might have three plays if you do something sideline-oriented quick. You can't take a sack. You just cannot take a sack in this situation. One timeout left. 20-yard line. Rivers. Rivers is dragged down. Exactly what you said could not happen. Tyrone Barber. Time it's out. now the Alana forced to burn that last timeout. Fifth sack for South Florida today. There is Blake Barnett, our Duluth training hardest working player, 400, 411 passing yards. Why do 
a response in the second half by Barnett. Showed some mental toughness. Able to find Solomon for those two touchdowns. And a credit to the Bulls. Making plays in critical situations. And this is the ball game. This is third and 25. You probably got, this is your last play, most likely. You, you could have one more play after this if you get the ball out quick and out of bounds, but no timeouts remain. A critical juncture, no doubt. In the first really huge moment in the career of MJ Rivers, who has been impressive today. We did not expect him to be in this position this early in his career, but A.J. Bush out, and so now does Rivers have a little bit of magic in him. From the 25-yard line, six seconds to go in the game. Rivers going to throw it towards the end zone. He's got Smalling, but he overthrows him. And that is the game. So the South Florida Bulls come to Chicago, and for the second straight year, they knock off the Fighting Illini. Charlie Strong's team did not play a perfect game, but played well enough to win an impressive second half comeback as they hand the Illini their first loss of the year. And MJ Rivers impressive on the two-minute drive, knows he's got to get up, gives it to his best player, Smalling, just overshoots him. A little too much mustard. Smalling had a step. The ball could have been thrown earlier. Smalling comes up with it, but way out of bounds, and Charlie Strong breathes the sigh of relief. The Bulls get another win over a Power 5 program. How impressive is this? 7-1 and one in their last eight games against the Power 5. That's going to do it for us. The State Farm Post Game Show next. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Big, Big Ten Network. For Jay Lehman, Ali Sturm, and our entire BTN crew, I'm Dave Revson saying so long.